Is it even worth building your own DIY bike when you can buy Suron for 3,600 US dollars? Well, that is the question I'm gonna cover now. Well, Suron is a mini motorcycle that sells in the US for 3,600 US dollars. In Europe, it is 5,260 dollars and a street legal version sells for 5,915 US dollars. So this is the most commonly asked question I get from uh, uh, my subscribers and from people that see my YouTube videos. Why would I ever be building a bike when I can buy Suron for the same price that looks amazing? So when you're doing your YouTube research and you're looking at Surons, this is the most customizable e-bike out there. So don't get fooled by comparing $3,600 in states only with these heavily modified super machines. If you have a Suron, don't take this wrong, please. Don't take it personally. We all are riders. We all want to have a fun. We love electric vehicles and this is nothing personal. I just get asked this question a lot and I feel like simple answer doesn't give it a justice. So let's compare what you get for the same price. So I have a little note because it's a lot of specs. So for $3,600 you get 5.2 kilowatt peak power with Suron and 13 kilowatt peak power with your DIY project. You get 2 kilowatt hour battery versus 2.6 kilowatt hour battery. You get 600 watt charger versus 1500 watt charger. That's more than double. So that's 3 hours charging versus 1.5 hour charging. Don't forget, we are not comparing the same battery. This is small battery, big battery, one charge is slow. The other one charges fast, even though it's bigger. Maximum speed, they say 70 kilometers per hour with Suron and DIY bike goes over 100 kilometers an hour. Distance per charge, that's always a little bit tricky because that's, that's so heavily impacted by your riding style. But based on my calculations, roughly you should be able to do 62 kilometers per uh, charge with Suron and 80 kilometers per charge with DIY bike. Big difference is obviously hub motor versus mid-drive. Mid-drive obviously good for jumping and balancing that bike because you have all the weight in between wheels. But take a look at these videos how loud Suron is. Hub motor is totally fine if you use that bike on roads, dirt roads and if you're not planning any crazy jumping or any craziness. I've been riding hub motors for a few years and I am so happy and I always love those advantages like no maintenance at all and super quiet stealth run. You get Bluetooth connectivity with a DIY bike, nothing like that with Suron. Paddling is a standard on your DIY bike. Paddling is extra cost with Suron. Size of those two, that's a big and I would say the most important decision factor for me. Because I'm pretty tall dude. I'm six, fo six foot something, 190 centimeters. And look at all these videos, like everybody knows it. 
everybody mentions that Suron is a small bike. As I'm a little bit oversized to this uh, electric sport motorbike and uh, my right ankle is still not healthy, that's why I asked a friend of mine, Tom, who is uh, much more experienced in off-road riding than I am, uh, to try out uh, the Suron. The weight of this bike is less than uh, 15 kilograms, so... Uh, 47 or what? what is 47, the, 47, I think, is that is the, the, official data, data, yes. the official data. And because I'm a bit more heavier than uh, double times. Close to double, <laughs> Close yes. to double. And uh, that's why the, the driving of this, uh, uh, this bike is a bit uh, strange uh, mm -hmm. uh, compared with the another um, uh, enduro bike. Even a small enduro. In the, even a because small even enduro. the smallest yeah. enduro is uh, two times heavier than this one. Yeah. And look at their website. They even say mini motorcycle on their website. This bike is designed for smaller men. And when you build your own DIY bike, you have so many options. Like for me, I purposely used bigger rims. I used bigger tires. I have a seat post that goes a little bit back and I have a stem that stretches a little bit forward. So that way I can sit comfortably. It's tweaked to my body. So I feel super comfortable and super happy. I had a smaller bike before and after longer rides I always feel a neck pain and it's just not comfortable. Replaceable battery with a Suron and non-replaceable battery with a DIY bike. I mean non-replaceable, of course you can replace it, it's just not like pulling it out to charge an apartment. I've never been a big fan of this because why would you be spending so much money for two batteries? To be able to swap them. Isn't it much better to just have fast charging so when you actually come home and you want to be riding right away you plug it in and an hour and a half you're fully charged. From 0 to 100 the difference is that you rarely discharge to 0. You usually charge from 30 to 100. So if it takes an hour I would never have two batteries. Then of course the big argument is street legal not street legal. You need to know how this is. Street legal Suron. They sell it as a street legal for a lot of money, so it's not even in this $3,600 category. It's close to $6,000. And it actually comes as a street legal because it has choked power. You need to cut a wire and connect it to unleash the full potential of Suron so then you actually end up with semi-legal Suron. This is not fully legal on the roads. Quality of used components. It's pretty common that people just do tweaks on their uh, stock Surons like brakes. Brakes are super common to replace right away on Surons. So what I was interested about next was if I want to have the same power with Suron like e-bike 4.2. So what I did, I spent some time on uh, these groups of Suron and I read through and I asked questions and I did my research what people would recommend for how much. So this is my, my calculation when you want to be having same specs on both bikes. You want to have a paddle system that's 125 US dollars. You want to have a super motor, uh, motor wheels, that's $350 and cool upgrade might be belt drive upgrade $500. So this sums up to $4,575. Then this is no power change, this is just tweaking uh, to have the same standard like DIY bike. So now we go to the power part. So what you need to upgrade is a battery, BMS and a controller. And with more power, you definitely need better brakes. So here we go. So the most common is AC controller. That's for $750. And battery 20S 10P. That is a little bit smaller than uh, what I have on a DIY bike. That I was priced for 1500 US dollars. I did a research how much you can sell your original battery for. So they usually sell 
for $800, so let's say you end up with $700 extra for the battery. If you're lucky and you sell the battery. So then we go to better brakes. I would recommend Magura brakes, that's extra $340. But at this stage, if you're lucky and you sell your battery, you end up buying the Suron and upgrading it for $6,300. And $65 if you live in the USA because in Europe it's much more expensive. If you're not lucky and you end up with a battery sitting in your garage because nobody wants to be taking a risk of buying a secondhand batteries, then this, this upgrade cost you $7,165 compared to $3,600 US dollars. <laughs> To make it clear, I have always loved Surons. I think they have amazing design. They look absolutely mind-blowing. Mid-drive, uh, big rear sprocket. That means even with a lower power, you have a lot of torque and a lot of fun, that's for sure. The frame is very unique. It's an awesome bike. Just don't take it as granted that it's $3,600. This is not what you're getting. This is not what you're getting, what I'm saying you can build for $3,600. So of course, the main concern is that this is not for everybody. Not everybody has the skill, tools and a space to build the DIY bike. So this is the different approach with a consumer versus builder. It's like, do you just want to buy and ride or do you want to learn new skill? Do you want to learn about this new field? that is popping out and has a huge business potential. Like that's, that's your question, you need to decide. For people that decide to build a DIY bike, I know it's tough at the beginning if you don't know anything because there's so much information you need to learn online and it takes so much time. So I just did my own summary of my own build. I have a huge sheet of every single part like a cable, connector, controller, wheels, spokes, tires, everything in the list. So you go one by one, you order from suppliers, and then I created four and a half hours long video guide, recording myself at a workshop, building my own bike. So if you don't feel confident enough to build your own, this is the best bet I think is online, because everything all the heavy work has been done for you already. I sell it on my website, mysuperebike.com, because it was a lot of work and I feel like I should be rewarded and I need to pay my bills too. If you want this DIY bike to be fully finished, we build them too and you can buy it. We ship only within Europe and you can check the price down in the description. We also offer different higher quality heavy-duty motorcycle like we call it a cyber bike and you can check more videos about this on this channel thanks so much for watching i'm leaving all the links my resources what i found down in the description so you can click and you can see that my prices are on point you should definitely check more videos on this channel about my developments about a cyber bike and my diy 4.2 stay tuned support us on patreon if you want and see you next time in another video.